people found, okay, cool, now it's worth me grinding this tournament because there's money on the line, you know, and, and hopefully players are starting to, to get back on the horse and start grinding again. But I mean, this is going to be quite a nice way to kick off this week because Mirko yeah. and K-Top, Mortal Kombat X training buddies for a really long time, and by the end of Mortal Kombat, I mean, there's no getting around the fact that Mirko and K-Top their their Raiden and their Raiden and Scorpion combination was some of the most exciting stuff we'd ever watched. But going into this, Injustice, this is a completely different game. They both did really, really well in the Path to Pro, uh, our European online league during the cha uh, Championship Series days. But that does take me by surprise. K-Top playing Cheetah. He was playing Superman the last time we saw him play. So Mirko going with Harley was to be expected. I will say. K-Top with Cheetah, not so much. Slime things off with Cheetah. I mean, I'm not too surprised that he's gone to a different character because, like we said, it's been a long time since we last saw K-Top. Uh, and Cheetah, you know, very rush down heavy, very tricky, kind of, you know, debatable as to where she belongs in the tier list. Definitely has her, you know, fair share of weaknesses, but a lot of damage, a lot of mix-up potential. Mirko is a complete lunatic. There really is no other way of saying it. Mirko he plays kinda... <laughs> like a complete madman, and Harley perfectly complements well, that. Well, Mirko had a style in Mortal Kombat X, which was, I'm gonna basically force my game plan down your throat, and I will make it work as aggressively as possible and I definitely get the idea that when he plays Harley in this game he very much does the same thing like lots of buttons lots of rush down and Ooh, there's pretty much there's pretty much yeah there's never a moment to stop when you're fighting against either of these two guys to be fair so Harley and uh, Cheetah this is a nice combination of characters with these two players I mean K-Top's already starting off a little bit crazy going for a lot of these sort of instant Ooh. leaps a lot of these sort of meaty strings, Mirko getting a few backdashes, but never really heavily punishing just yet. Now, Mirko's been playing Harley for a while, and one thing that he does really well with Harley is just convert off everything. If he gets a hit, he is ready to take max damage. Definitely. Even if it's, sometimes you get those kind of like awkward, you know, wayward hits, and Mirko is always ready to get as much as possible. Ooh! Big read there from Keisha. Flying dropkick. Oh, my days. But, I mean, uh, yeah, is it, on, on the subject of that, I feel like... We, see, we saw a couple of attempts right here already where K-Top was going for those tick grabs. Uh, Cheetah, she has to make a couple of reads on what kind of grabs she wants to go for. The damage output is mega, but if she's wrong, she can be with punished. But I mean, looking at that super meter, K-Top, and I actually love that roll, not giving him the chance to clash to potentially set up for more damage on chip or grabs. Oh, he's gonna get the clash out and still be comfortably in the lead. My question is how much to spend. Cheetah kind of needs, needs bars to get any respectable yeah. damage. I don't think that's why he spent two. He's gonna be content with the 25%, and with her damage output, two bars is a really lethal amount. The first bar might get the clash out of Mirko, and the second bar, now he's got three of them, might be enough oh, wow. to win it. But he's gotta land the hit first, right? Yeah, speaking of which, Mirko was ready to get a combo off the cupcakes, but actually didn't commit to that one. Ooh, big cross up. And there's that 50 50. That mix up between forward two or back two, overhead or low, but the patience is. Go in for the jump in and understand that the hyena is always going to be a threat. Kind of has to go a bit crazy here, and that's going to be the first game for Moko. Yeah, K-Top going down with full bar, but to be honest, I mean, that is Cheetah, right? Cheetah is a, a bit of a nutcase. You know, she's very unpredictable, has a lot of movement options, but ultimately, when she's not point blank, she's not real kind of threat when she's looking at doing damage she has to kind of be right in front of you or at that range that she can go for that sort of diving elbow or the leap but again if you've got a life lead and you're less kind of inclined to press buttons and stick things out that those movement options will catch you're not really quite as stressed out but k-top looks like he's only really willing to spend one game on the uh, cheat and go straight back to superman well superman is just bread and butter right this is the character that he put himself on the map with an in injustice uh, at least in the eu um, he played like a combination, I believe he played Black Adam a little bit too, but back then, I mean, who didn't? You know, Black Adam was such a dangerous character, everyone kind of had him in pocket. But Superman's the character he's really been using the most. Now, this is one thing that I'm kind of... I'm curious to see how Mirko handles this, because like we said, Mirko kind Ooh, of... Did drop the charge. Mirko enforces his game style on you at all times. It's it's even back to MKX, right? We'd see him just run through players. Ooh, if, nice. if they could not get a hang on, on what he was trying to do to them. One thing Mirko has never really been a big fan of is respecting your options, and Superman makes you respect his options. Only when he gets going, though, and right now, <laughs> getting going is the one thing that K-Top is having a really hard time doing, but here come those plus frames, you know, the forward 2 three pressure, the forward 3 itself being super plus on block, and the second you get tagged, you take Ouch. this much Oof. damage. I mean, that's just why Superman will never be bad in this game for stuff like that. Oh, oh wow, but starting off big with that meter burn back three, obviously normally you have to be quite careful against Superman, but Harley's back three goes so far and has such a big range to it. Couple of options there. Going straight for the trade pop. Ooh, that's a, not a trade Mirko wants to take. 
a traded laser. One thing when it comes to trades that Harley will do super well is the fact that her projectiles are instant. You know, in a trading war, the instant projectiles is a fantastic tool because she'll block a little bit earlier. You get hit by the projectiles straight away. That said, you get hit by one of these Superman lasers, especially in trade. And at Mirko's health, you don't want to take a single one. And Ooh. a really crucial roll, the down two with punish. K-Top, it's very dangerous for him to wager this because he hasn't got the meter to win it. Good luck on that low though, but nothing really coming out of it. K-Top, a little bit down on life, but at least gets out of the corner. Forced to block those cupcakes, which of course is going to allow Bud or Lou to come through. I can't remember which colour is which. Oh, oh wow, actually caught him out of the air. But no bar now for Mirko. Wait Ooh. a minute! Actually, gobsmacked that that jump in connected. I want to oh, hesitation for Mirko. You know, he wanted to go for the anti-air. Oh, the big whiff! But the push block just to stay out of harm's way. Oh my god. Very important. One more of these lasers. He's not got the meter. He's gonna watch out for the punish! No! What is going on? I think that was an error for Mirko. You yeah. know he wanted to punish that properly, but accidentally got a point blank kind of uh, dummy shot. Definitely isn't what he was going for, but not gonna lose the game on it at least. You know, K Top's probably gonna be a bit unhappy with how that one went, but Well, K Top, I, we, we say things at all or nothing decisions quite often, and I think that was another one of those where I'm assuming uh, K Top was trying to catch Mirko pressing a button, which is why he dedicated that sweeping laser. The problem is, he doesn't have any meter to make it safer, and it kind of goes back to what I just talked about with those instant gunshots. When he's got that much health, an instant gunshot will punish that sweeping laser. That was the one situation you didn't want to do regularly. I actually quite respect um, Mirko's reads though, already. Like, I mean, that I think it was like two or three times alone in that game, he managed to meet a burn roll straight through Superman full screen. And that is a full combo if you do it on a read, and someone like Harley, that is going to hurt. But Mirko is 100%, like, he will spend all four bars on meter burn roll if he thinks it's going to get him that hit. Because he does such a good job of building his bar and managing it, like, he's, he's happy to spend it on all of that kind of stuff. But that's going to be a lot of corner carry already for K-Top. Big damage, oh, wake up, forward dash from Mirko, not quite sure what he was reading there. Yep, and with one bar and trait, that's going to be a huge chunk. And he's forced into a situation where that was wow. actually a lovely block, by the way. Those those dive bomb setups can be really, really ambiguous and hard to see. But K-Top's had a fantastic oh, wow. first round. There should be guaranteed chip, but actually having a little bit of a hard time closing it out. I wonder if Mirko's going to be able to at least land a full combo now. Nah, not quite. Nah, jump two will do it. K-Top looking a little bit shaky when it comes to uh, rushing down, though. Like he's, he's kind of respecting Mirko a bit too much. Like he's going for those Superman jump-ins and kind of hesitating before going for that 4-2. Normally you see Superman's really just happily throw it out there knowing they can get it guaranteed, but I think k -Top is just expecting Mirko to, to poke out so much that he's actually giving him the opportunity to do so. I find that sweeping laser is quite an interesting tool in this match purely because I mean, you normally, can't not do it, right? Well, you know, normally the hyenas, they do a really good job of kind of like locking you down, but with the combination of the fact that sweeping laser keeps you in the air for a long time, you've got the air dash, you can do a decent job of making sure the hyena just doesn't hit you at all, especially if it's going underground. Now you can see how this this damage, uh, the actual Harley uh -oh. shot by itself might not do too much, but it is going to add up very quickly if you hit so many bullets in succession. <laughs> and Mirko jumping a little bit too early there. I mean, it's Brainiac shit, man. It's so hard to judge when they're going to bounce back man. into the stage. Everyone knows they have to wait longer, but it's a question of, oh, have I waited too long? Have I not waited long enough? Let's go for it, and then you miss. There's but a sweet still. spot. There's a sweet spot right there. But that, that's the kind of zoning that Harley thrives on. She might not do a ton of damage with the projectiles themselves, but she throws so much at you so frequently that it can really just begin to annoy you. Well, they're annoying. Yeah, you said the word. But then one trade. 200 damage. Ouch. Instant gunshot. I don't think Mirko's going to be too worried. Actually, look at the fact of the meter there. They were even until that one bar got spent. So, if he can get the clash out of K-Top right now, he's in a good situation. But he's got to get that hit. Check him with gunshots yeah, on the way. And, of punish. course, get the knockdown. But hasn't been able to do a huge amount. Those air dashes fighting his way out of the corner. Now, this is where Mirko has to be really careful. Anything by K-Top now when it's meter burn is going to kill on hit. Oh, Ooh, goes underneath. Oh, Ooh, get back hit. in. Get back in. What are you doing? Come Actually, makes you wonder space. if uh, Mirko was going to take the damage there, or we would have kind of preferred to have the corner. But to be honest, he's actually dealing with the full screen game of Superman quite well, so I don't think he's too worried about letting Superman have the distance. I think he's going to be worried punish now. again. Yeah, he's going to force the clash, of course. We knew that was going to be coming. I don't see Mirko spending any meter. I actually see him saving that bar. Of course. And K-Top knows it. Very, very good read. I mean, these guys have been training partners for a couple of years now. Oh, and they're going to know each other super well. And K-Top making a good read on that straight laser. Well... Nice playing each other enough doesn't mean you're immune to uh, not accidentally mistiming the jump. And that's going to happen to Mirko. We're going to take it to 2-1. So we're kind of expecting this to go back and forth. Like we've said a lot, these guys have played a lot across uh, both MKX and now Injustice 2. So kind of expecting it to be close. Regardless of uh, what matchups we may see. I'd be very surprised to see Mirko ever change off of Harley and K-Top. Now he's gone back to Superman almost straight away. Uh, I kind of think this is what we're probably going to be seeing for the rest of the time. But now it's the stage going to be. Back cave, yeah, not too bad. 
You see that Superman can get some insane damage with background bounces, but still, only gets a couple of mobility options, so not too bad. I think it's just nice to see these guys play again, because it has been so long since we got to see them uh, at a higher level, kind of just really going at it. Sorry, you may have heard some clicking. I've realised I've been a bit of a dummy and have not shared the stream, which I did just now. So, hopefully, we're good to go. Oh, nice big hit going to Mirko. Not quite doing a ton of damage, but definitely enough to get that life lead. And a big trip guard on landing immediately, but a corner transition. That's actually the second time Mirko's done that. Makes you wonder that there's, maybe there's a chance that Mirko is just not really expecting it to go through at that range, or maybe he just genuinely doesn't care about having corner pressure. I'm going to be honest, I've been sharing the stream out and actually missed the entire first half of this round, but looking at the health bars, kind of looks like uh, K-Top. A little bit behind, but when you're Superman with two bars and one trait, I mean, you can undo a lot of health in just one laser. There we oh, go. Wow, I mean, away. speak of the devil, right? He's pretty much even things out completely. And he's built the trait back. Such a, a dangerous tool of Superman is how fast he builds that character power back when it's run out. And there you go. Bam! 430 damage. Easy. I actually love the, ad uh, actually, the ad adaptation from K-Top, seeing that he's going for much less sweeping lasers now. I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah, he kind of did one there. but Not there, <laughs> guys. Generally, there. Now, at, at a lot of ranges, we would see him go for sweeping laser. He's now going for an air dash forward or back because he, he wants Mirko to go for the meter burn roll. He's trying to condition him to either do it and waste the bar or do it in a way that he can actually maybe get a hit for it. Mm. But you can see how it kind of opens up K-Top's full screen options. And Mirko now forward dashing into the straight laser. There's one thing about the way Mirko has always played Harley Quinn, uh, which you will notice the more you watch him play. He is never content actually playing the zoning game. Even though Harley Quinn is actually, a, she can very well be a keepaway character with a combination of trait, cupcake bombs, gunshots, etc, etc. Mirko always seems to use those projectiles as a means to check the opponent while he comes in. He lands projectiles, but he'll never sit there and actually win that full screen battle. He uses it to frustrate K-Top, and right when he has that sweet spot, now he goes in, oh, wow. and his pressure is just so explosive. Speak which though, K-Top being a little bit shaky on the defense here. That's two wake-ups now that probably weren't the, the right decision at the time. Mirko gonna bait both of them out, and also decides to deal damage, K-Top. It was just the, uh, the actual clash itself. Oh, big read for Marco! Oh. Actually, kind of really disappointed that that didn't work out. I know. I mean, like, he had the read, and he was half a second. He was a split second away from that gunshot catching the anti air. And after the, the clash was used, that probably would have been the round, too. He had some meter to do some damage here. He's going to have to watch out. Oh, full screen, though. I wonder if taking the forward, the ice breath, was intentional. <gasps> oh, they get the MD jump. K Top is really trying to just. Oh, oh, the read! The read! Is it going to work? No, air tech! Why aren't you air teching? Oh, oh my lord, that new jump it didn't work! Oh! Oh, why didn't he? <laughs> that was uh, uh, a bit of an unfortunate end. I have um, many questions about why that ended. Why was the first meter burn laser... No, why was the last meter burn laser not done earlier? I'm sure he could have let that rip slightly earlier on, but I think he tried to delay it. And he, he didn't go for the air tech when he was being launched, so he risked losing the entire round, and I don't know. I'm, I'm very confused. But what also somewhat confuses me, K-Top going for Starfire. Repping those Greek colours. I respect that. I mean, Starfire is a character that we don't see too often, but she does have a very unique place in the game right now. She does a lot of... She's kind of the new chip damage queen, really, when it comes to that sort of full-screen game. Has definitely become uh, kind of one of those strong zoners of the game, but has a lot of interesting utility. But the question is, how does it actually match up against Harley Quinn? This is something we don't really get to see too often at all. Mirko, he's gonna, he's gonna have to... And not Mirko, sorry, K-Top. He's gonna have to be careful, though, because fundamentally, yes, Starfire is a really good zoner. However, just going back to that instant projectile property that Harley Quinn brings to the table, like right there, that is why Harley Quinn is gonna win these trades, because she's gonna get that instant projectile and she's gonna be able to block in time. On top of the fact that the amount of meter that Mirko is gonna build, He's going to eventually get in. So, I don't know, K-Top, if he loses a Starfire in this one game, I don't know if he's going to stick with it particularly. Well, maybe. I mean, it is a first to ten, and even though that was close, and technically K-Top's losing, it is only 3-1. Like, he's got plenty of games to bring it back if he can. Still, though, Mirko is kind of feeling himself now. Oh! Mirko we know and love. I mean, Mirko is famous for his Scorpion combos. Like, he was world famous for those Hellfire Scorpion confirms. Now he's got Harley Quinn, who can convert off every single touch. Like, this is a very, very good character for him. But K-Top, alive for now. Gets yeah, around. he managed to flip things around. Ooh, armor breaking with the forward 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, interesting. Go for that kind of ambiguous nice. jump three. I really like that confirm from K-Top. And of course, the 2-3-2, two, two, expecting Mirko to maybe try and interrupt the Stardust. And there is no Stardust with the 2-3-2. Two, two. Ooh. 
from the high is going to connect easily. Kato has a lot of bar to work with, but he's even going to get the hit. That, you actually think about the amount of chip that Starfire is going to get with this bar. Goes in for the low, instant confirm and the unbreakable. Yeah. He's still in this. Yeah, He's still in this one. Wow. Yeah, Kato. And this is that kind of strength stuff. I all know if he threw that a bit earlier. But he has no trait. He has no trait. Uh -oh. oh, no. This is going to be a guaranteed loss. Now, the question is, does Mirko deal both bars to hurt Kato here? Or does right. he hold is the it, bar? Is it trait versus trait? Or is it going to be gunshot on prediction of trait of which Kato can crouch and whip out the bar? Mirko spent both. Oh, the read. He has enough for one rep of it. Oh, there, there it is. Oh, there, there it is. is. Crouch. That is exactly the situation I was expecting. So what we just saw there was right when the clash was used, it was a complete Mexican standoff of right. We've both got traits. So if I go for my projectile, right as you go for Lou, Lou's probably gonna hit me or Bud, you know, the, the trait basically. But if you read that I'm gonna trait a Starfire and you do Harley Quinn gunshot, you will beat me and win the game. So that right at the end, Katop expected a gunshot. So he waited. But the gunshot didn't come. But when Mirko pulled the trigger and went for the gunshot, Katop would have punished it with his own trait. Like that it was so patient. It wasn't like he just saw one shot. Like he made sure to wait for the second yeah. one. No, it was patient. That was really good patience from Katop. And a really good game overall. He was severely down at the start with a character he only just swapped to, to the point that we were like, ah, uh, this isn't going well. Maybe he's going to swap off. But no, here we are sticking at it. Oh, big neutral jump. Yeah, instant jump too. It's actually not the first time we've seen Mirko do that either. Like actually, both players are really just they're doing neutral jumps in that neutral just to try and bait. It's a, such a big power if you make the read. Oh wow, good option from Kato. I, I really do like that airborne down three um, because it just covers so much base. I know that you can go for the up three or the down three and she'll go for a different blast in a different oh direction. Oh my that god. That was a really nice combo. And yeah, I mean to be honest, I think everyone would have gone for down one in that situation. Why not? And wow, challenges it with a trait. Trying to get some damage. Big dust frames. Yeah, yeah there's respect for Mirko. Maximum delay wake up, but there's the down one trade. Yeah, Mirko going to squeeze it out. Not much he's going to be able to do. I believe 2-3-2 two, two is plus 2 on block, which means that with a, a, a down one as fast as Mirko's, uh, Kato's not going to worry too much. He's actually going to get hit with a confirm here. And he's going to oh, get wow, hit back to jump in too. Yeah, yeah, Mirko is just going ham. I mean, there's no reason Mirko shouldn't. He's got such little health on this first life bar. If he's careful at any point, if even a down one on hit takes it away, then you understand 100% that's why Mirko went so crazy. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually quite impressed with Kato's Starfire. I didn't even know he had a Starfire. He's playing that full screen game. Mirko kind of just walking into things at the moment. Those sparks on hit having a deceivingly good hit stun. <laughs> oh, clean Those, jump though. Uh, I mean, even the sparks on block from range are plus. And in some situations when you go for trait, you can actually jail them. I know quite often it's off a knockdown, but even for good measure, you can meter burn that trait off Starfire and make it mid anyway. But she is such a chip damage queen. But at this health, again, Kato, he's got to watch out for those trades. And now he's got no trait. And it's starting to add up. And look at the bar that K-Top is building. Oh, the jump three is so those. sick. This has been so good for oh. K-Top. And there we go. And even on block, I'm sure he would have turned that into trait anyway. Yeah, that was I really mean, well played from K-Top. De definitely, why not? And it actually looks to me like one thing Starfire will demand, I think, is an element of matchup knowledge, of knowing exactly what your si what your uh, solutions are at any given moment. Um, yeah, when she goes for those Stardusts on block, what button do you go for? What button do you press? How do you interrupt some of this pressure? When you think she's going to go for trait, do you have options? If so, what are they? Mirko's going to have to kind of really try and adapt on the fly if this is a matchup he's not particularly knowledgeable in. Someone asked in the chat, how come Mirko isn't trying to counter zone? I'm going to be honest, it has never been Mirko's style. Mirko has never been a full screen player. Even if he can in a matchup, he will try so hard to go in because that's just... That's how he plays NRS games. No, he likes washing down. Oh, big combo from that. Shout out to Free Patch Batman. <laughs> That's gonna be a full corner convert too. Opts not to spend his bar. Big chip damage as well. Look at the meter he just built there. Mirko already sitting at two bars. Oh, big punish on the background bounce too. That standing one, such a good punisher from Harley Quinn. It's gonna be a restand. No, no, no. no. Opts to go for the treat again. I actually think it was better for K-Top that he got hit by a Hyena because Mirko had dedicated to that back too. Kind of allowed him to escape the corner. Here comes the pressure. But of course, the down one check. Even if K-Top wants to press a button, if I am if I'm remember right, that is minus two. And she's got a super fast down one, which means that Starfire can't get out if they both press down one at the same time. And if Atali down one into Tantrum is going to be a full combo. Well, I mean, that's the second time that Mirko's kind of challenged for that down one war after the string. And that's the second time he's got a full combo for it. Like, he is 100% going to keep doing it until he gets punished. But just like that, K-Top's taken away all that life on block and built all that bar in the process. I gotta say, I love the fact that K-Top was actually saving his trait. He was confident he can go into it without having to use it, saving it for this next round. If Mirko's going to use all four of those bars for things like that, meet and burn roll. Starfire's trait is going to be a direct answer for that kind of really instant aggression uh, that 
Mirko's trying to go for. But they're down one, forcing the clash. Yeah, Very important. Clash as well, that was going to hurt. I think better push him towards the background too. I think he'll spend two, because they're relatively even here. Yeah, he's going to spend two, of course. And that's spent the bar, K-Top doesn't have anything left now. That super delayed duck actually forced them the meter burn usage out of that to make it a mid. And then down one, good patience, and K-Top with the interrupt, but doesn't have any bar to get anything more off it. Really building this pressure, but... Only just building his first bar now. I kind of feel like, yes, he does. I kind of feel like Mirko, uh, sorry, K Top is trying to sort of almost like condition it. I think eventually we're going to start seeing these Stardusts on. Oh board. wow! But he's going to, he's probably going to start using Stardusts in situations where Mirko is going to be conditioned to. Oh, oh no! He had dashed into it. Oh, K Top was not oh, expecting no. that. Uh -oh. And it's K Top, and it's Mirko. So of course he's going to get full combos, but you can't. Armored back three, Starfire. That meter burn hair flip is going to armor break. <gasps> oh wow! Actually, if that was a back three, I wonder if that would have happened again. If that was a four three, so the air dash went over it. Back three might have beaten it. Ooh! And again, another game going down to the Y. Is that going to do enough? Yep. Yes, it will easily. Nice confirm from Mirko. And another game going down to, well, a few points of health. Big fan of this match so far. Really, really big fan of it. And I think, actually, you know what? I think K-Top, I'd like to see him stick. I'd like to see K-Top stick with Starfire now. It's definitely working out for him the best. You know, it wasn't looking good. I mean, the cheater pick at the start was probably just him trying to have some fun with it. Maybe go, oh, you know, I'll see how this goes. I mean, look, it's K-Top, right? It's, it's K-Top. K-Top is entirely built around playing loads of different characters. In the MKX days, he just played anyone that had run cancels. Yeah. And in Justice 2, of course, I'm sure he'll, he'll go with slightly different characters. But you know what? If someone plays Superman and then they go to Starfire, that doesn't really surprise me too much. Um, they do have somewhat similarities as character archetypes, so it's no wonder that K-Top's doing really well with this character. And I gotta say, I love that shader, man. That shader looks really cool. No, it does. Blue Starfire is... Nice. I love the shaders that change the effects. Like, yeah. that, that, that's the cool stuff to it, definitely. At least some of them. <laughs> Obviously, it's just the hair for her. I think it's still green. Still, though, K-Top managing to open the full screen. But for how long? Against someone like Mirko, who is so aggressively in your face all the time. I think it's going to be really important for K-Top to try and get rid of those background interactions, though, because Mirko will <gasps> use them to just fly all over the place. Did you s Wait, what was that? What? Wait, I've seen him do that before. That's a really tricky Mirko Wait, setup. That, that's a setup to get the hyena to appear from behind instead, and it zap! Is. And then oh. as the hyena comes out, you're then in front of them again. It's that is really, genius. really tricky. That is genius. But to be fair, it's Mirko. Mirko's setups have always been absolutely insane in both games. My days. All right, lots of chip. And actually, Mia Burn rolling through it. Wow. Heard a big air dash. K-Top gonna make that big call out. Gonna connect at least. Starfire's air dash. That jump three being Deceptively strong. I mean, just the amount of different angles it can cover can be hard to deal with. But all oh, that chip damage too again. Look at the bar. K Top is just racking up. But it's that almost like that full screen mix up because at any point she can cancel one of those stardusts into her trait. So if she throws a stardust and you try to move, you'll just move into the trait and then the stardust explodes for really good damage. But if you sit there and block, chip and meter build for days, it, it really is what Ooh. Starfire does so well in this game is just, it's chip, it's presence, it's mind games everywhere on screen. Ooh. Oh, you're going to spend the bar there. Oh, no button press whatsoever. I think Mirko is maybe just expecting him to go into the trait. Yeah, there. I think he was expecting the, uh, I definitely think he was expecting the trait. Maximum delay wake up from K-Top. Good block, very Not good dealing block. with the hyena this time. Gets uh, him out of the corner too. Oh, gets Ooh. both bars. Mirko just built one. He can get some health back here. Only just built it. You know what? I think it's more likely Mirko's going to wait. I think... Uh, sorry, uh, K-Top's probably going to wait there. Yeah, of course. Spend the bar. Get the health back. And then try and win this full screen game. You know, take those trades. Oh. Mirko doesn't quite have access to uh, a bar anymore at the moment. Well, soon. Oh, but... no. But just look at all that trait. Look at the trait that K-Top has. Spend oh, the, no, the heart really, really on the air tech. But no, Mirko being a little bit too preemptive there. And K-Top... The patience starting to pull through. K-Top's really slowing this down and kind of just playing that one step ahead of Mirko. Mirko seems to be doing the role every time K-Top is expecting him to. So he's literally not doing anything. And he's basically just throwing Mar away. And then uh, K-Top's either hitting him or pushing him back on block. He's also forcing Mirko to to really try and make a hard read on. When he's full screen, when is a Stardust going to be cancelled into trait? Because if you expect him to trait, of course, um, there, are, there, there are certain things you can so do to get in. Really grab out a bottle of water. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but there are certain things you can do to try and get in, but you have to make that read that she's going to go for trait. Um, but if you just sit there and expect, if you, if basically if you just sit there and expect the trait as well, you can then take chip for days without her even using trait. So while you're taking chip damage and while she's building meter, because she hasn't used trait, her trait is recharging as well as the rest of her resources. That full screen mind game, man, is such a dangerous tool for Starfire. Uh, but yeah, Mustard's gone to get some water. 
Uh, currently suffering from a pretty bad cold at the moment, so uh, not the best situation to compensate in. But I, I was dying last week, and you're dying this week. It's oh. it's it's the cycle. Some chest pains, man. But this has been actually a pretty good start for Kato. He says as he's as I come in to see him being comboed. <laughs> well, it was a good start until uh, <laughs> yeah, he got caught one, at one time. But there you go, that is exactly what the mind game is. The second Mirko goes, right, I'm gonna roll in, or I'm gonna jump in, or I'm gonna meet your bed roll in, or whatever. That one time K-Top goes for trait after Stardust, he gets hit by the trait, which by itself does good damage, let alone if it knocks you into the Stardust. It's like K-Top is also reading that uh, preemptive meter burn back three every time. Because every time Mirko's going for it to try and chop that single hitting armor, he's going for something hits twice. Oh no, K-Top uh -oh. got interrupted before he actually connected with the water. I think using a cash that earlier is really unfortunate. No, it's never ideal. Oh, Mirko oh, wow, wants yeah, to take damage too. I mean, he's Harley, right? He's going to build meter for days here. That's what I mean that Mirko is unpredictable because he definitely hasn't always been quite antsy to uh, to deal damage with the Clash, even if it's guaranteed. So in that situation, I think it was quite reasonable for K-Top to think he's not going to spend it. You know, he's going to keep hold of it. But no, he spent everything. A really oh, nice antsy on that down back three. I love the spacing from K-Top. I mean, he's almost using that jump in down three as a zoning tool in itself. He's using it to both, you know, retreat and to stay safe. And there, from ranges where he knows Mirko might try and press a button, the jumping down <laughs> wow. three. Wow. This aim no, broke. Oh my god. Don't fix it. It's eight. Number nine, is it coming? Do number nine. No, he's not. That was, uh, that was K-Top giving Mirko a little bit of his own medicine, I yeah, think. it was coast to coast at least. Oh, oh wake up. I'm a breaking wake up. Oh, pressing K K-Top can't lose this one after that. He can't allow himself to lose this one after that. Oh no, the restand and the damage over time. Oh, oh Atlantis, Atlantis. Your interactables never cease to amaze. I'm actually genuinely surprised that K-Top still lost the game after the, uh, the uh, seven times, eight times jumping three. I know. I mean, it's. Um, I'm actually even more surprised that Mirko got hit by so many of them. I don't know. Maybe he was expecting him to retreat. Maybe he wasn't even going to try that yet because he was content taking the chip damage and being within that range. Is that one of those situations that K-Top's like, this is literally the last thing he is expecting me to do? Maybe. I mean, anyone in the chat, if you called eight jump threes, or seven or eight, I think it was about that number. If you were watching, I was like, right, now this is where he does jump three eight times in a row. I would consider you a god. Well. But is it now something that Mirko respects? Funny enough. Does he expect him to do that again? Funny enough. If that was a first of five, Mirko would have won, and it would have been a, a pretty hilarious ending. But we're <laughs> only halfway through, boys. Maybe. And girls, of course. A big crouch. Thank you very much for the cheer, Atom87. Much appreciated, man. Cheers. Thanks, man. Okay, Top, really starting to force Mirko out again. Spends two bars in the process, but really starting to build some of it back. <laughs> I mean, the jump three, it is in itself a zoning tool that is just a combination of the rest of her tools. And I think that's how uh, K-Top is using it. You know, he's using it in his spacing game. He's using it as a range to try and stay safe. But yeah, if he uses it too early, you can actually get punished for spacing it poorly. And yeah, forced to go in for a straight uh, standing oh, three. nice to the Down back three, Ooh. and he gets another one. Very nice. I know in the corner, she can actually confirm a standing three Stardust after the forward three, but only if you get a standing three Stardust earlier enough. I think K-Top did it a bit late, and I think he acknowledged that and tried to go for a little bit less damage. See chat saying it was uh, all the jump threes are ambiguous cross-ups every time. Not necessarily. If he does the jump uh, the jump three on the way up, it's obviously still a mid. And if she's jumping at you from like right up, like up front, nine times out of ten, it's going to hit in front anyway. And most of those, I believe, were going to hit in front or be a mid anyway. There's no way they both didn't down one after that reset. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> Definitely. Oh, the big read! Mirko's actually been fishing for that all set and finally gets it. There's the setup. Instant jump, but swiftly but again, he, he literally Wait. crouch blocked it. That's are we going to see? Yep, there's the, the setup. And he jumped straight out of it. Looks that like K-Top has some knowledge. <laughs> that was so strange. But I mean, these guys have been training partners in the past. It makes sense that maybe K-Top would be knowledgeable about some of these setups. And there's that pressure. Yep, going in for that jump three once again. Court blocking low, and there's the unclashable K-Top. Very good. tie things up five to five. Looks like K-Top's good at just kind of... I mean, we're not really expecting a Starfire to be this explosive. You know, he just kind of gets the damage out of nowhere, but Mirko... Just getting hit by the low part of that string is what I ended up losing in the game. You know, you get tagged by the little two hitting low, that combos into forward three, goes for unclashable, and because you're spending bar, it is all doing a lot of damage. I like his use of the uh, the two one as well. Uh, that string that goes into the low drill, that he's consistently cancelling into meter burn forward three. Oh, it's five five. Like you said, we might be halfway through, and it looks like we are going to be. So far. 
I think this is probably going to be a match that we see the rest of the time. I'm not going to lie, I, I didn't even know K-Top had a Starfire because of how infrequently we get to see him played nowadays. But the fact that he clearly has this other character is uh, refreshing to see. And I did just realize that K-Top is rocking the Raiden background card. Even if he doesn't, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming he doesn't really use Raiden because he mustn't believe the character is very strong. Um, otherwise, he would be using him. Or well, maybe Raiden doesn't fit his style in this game. He plays Superman, he plays a Starfire. I mean, it's definitely Raiden not. is the complete opposite of that archetype. Yeah, it, it's definitely not MKX Raiden again. Like, it, it's, it might have, like, the same moves, like, visually, and the inputs might be similar, but that's basically where their similarity is. Maybe if K-Top K hasn't got his restand and his run cancel and the swag, I don't think he's interested. I mean, Raiden's still got the swag, just not quite that. It's swag. not K-Top levels of no, swag, definitely that's not. for sure. Oh, Merkel went for it again, but the jump three, the preemptive. K-Top's doing that a lot. At ranges that he would normally get out yet, he's going for that long range. He's going for the longest range, jump three. You can really see the strength of Starfire being able to cancel anything into hair flip into trait to just cash out that extra damage. You know, normally people are like, ah, the 2-1 doesn't get a huge amount of damage off outside the corner, but at least mid-screen. If she goes for 2-1 two, uh, two into the hair flip into trait, that's a, a nice chunk. Oh wow, that down one made the jump oh. in this completely. And K-Top, not hesitant to spend two bars on that bounce cancel. But Mirko, he, he's, he's consistently getting hit by that string now. Like, almost every single time we see that low drill come through, Mirko's getting hit. And it's allowing K-Top now to just spend a lot of his bar to just dedicate for the launch. But I mean, it's Starfire. He's going to build that bar back with Starfire all day, every day. Yes, indeed. It means that if he can get an early life feed and force Mirko on that bar, he is going to be able to be very free when it comes to contesting the clashes too. So he's going to have around. all the bar to go for the wager. But Mirko going to take the first life bar. Already doesn't have a clash though, so it's going to be quite difficult. And a, wow, meter burn roll from K-Top. Okay. Almost built a whole bar back from doing that. Interestingly, Ouch. that K-Top chose not to <gasps> go for the entire trait. I think he actually would rather have access to the trait rather than getting chip in that one moment, but... You see what I mean? See. Mirko went for like three meter burn rolls in that small sequence. Two of them missed completely, but the one he did, right as K-Top must have just assumed there's no way he's going to meter burn roll here. Went straight through the tire, full combo, got the clash out of K-Top. But at this health, he's got to watch out. Uh-oh, yep. especially if he gets tagged by one of those. You oh, 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 no! <gasps> oh, yep, that's going to do it. This is why Starfire is good, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's 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 one of her most practical uses. You know, she has a interesting kind of different kind of utility and chip damage from long range on mids is, is one of them, 100%. And even if you get tagged, right, that was that literally started off a straight projectile. Just her normal default straight fireball happened to connect and did a massive ton of damage behind it because it had the trait. That's why you can cancel anything into trait. It gives you that element of a mix up from full screen. You know, does he go for the beam? Does he not? It lets you be safer on block. I mean, it's just, again, it gives you something else to worry about. But with a 6-5, Kato actually taking the lead in this set now. They've been sort of like climbing up behind Mirko. Mirko would quite often be the one to sort of take that occasional game, but mm. it's going to be good for Katop that he's now been able to sort of like turn the tide and put things in his favor. But again, Mirko is, I don't know whether it's just him not blocking low, or whether it's him trying to press buttons and challenge. Oh, wow, yeah, gets caught. Goes into the tantrum stance, corner, restand. No, he doesn't. Heiner, every time he delays that, I wonder if he can get hit by wake-up attack, because K-Top's starting to either wake up every time or just jump out. Usually jump out, but it kind of really need Mirko to start kind of expecting that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely forced Mirko in a situation where he's now going to have to either go for a different setup or use less hits in that combo of which he gets the setup. Because if you use a combo that goes out really late, you know, if there's loads of hits and they hit the floor really quickly, it's going to allow you to tech roll, to jump, to wake up way sooner than Ouch. if you've gone for something higher up in the air. I mean, you can see how slow that trait recharges though with Starfire. It's such a powerful tool, but you really have to manage it well. Because you do not get... I mean, you start off obviously with a full bar, which is oh, really wow. good. But as soon as you've got it down to nothing, it can actually take quite a while to get it back again. Actually, poking with the down back three, really brave. But that jump three, wow. so much mileage. But I mean, Mirko, he's very, very jump happy. And he's getting constantly clipped in situations like that. If K-Top wow. had gone for the longer jump three, that even would have air to air. Oh, big wake up. Mirko, at this point, can even uh, <laughs> shot in the back of the head with a laser beam. Absolutely executed. K-Top, now, is that going to be 7-5? Uh, He's actually pulled ahead very comfortably now. But I like how in those situations, K-Top knew that Mirko was going to block a lot of those, um, the sparkles, but he didn't turn the trait behind all of them because Mirko had loads of bar and was looking to meet a bone roll. And the second Mirko went for it, then he started to go for the trait after the sparks. Get the bar out, make Mirko, or make you think that Mirko's not going to go for it, and then you can obviously start doing it. It's literally conditioning 101. 
I'm going to be honest, man. I think a Starfire pick was the last thing I expected from I didn't, As I said, I didn't even know he played this character. We haven't seen him play in so but long. That's the key word. We haven't actually seen K-Top play this game in a very long time. So, of course, there's scope that he's been learning characters that have come out since then. During Path to Pro, when Starfire was around, Actually no, it was it, it was even during I believe the Path of Pro days. I don't mean she was barely out. No, it, it was it was actually the it was the uh, IPS finals was the first tournament that she was legal at. Yeah. So even even so during the Path of the Pro days, she wasn't even legal during the time we last saw K Top compete and Mirko for that matter. Oh, Mirko cornered himself. That's unfortunate as he's gone straight to that forward three already. Big damage coming from K Top. 420 points immediately. And that's the challenge again. That is the second time K Top has not gone for the standing three into Sparks. Uh, Wake up down to Mirko maybe getting a little bit desperate. Yeah, I feel like K-Top's trying to go for a little bit more consistency. Harley has that smaller hitbox, right? So he's going to have to go for slightly easier combos in the corner. Nice. Looks like K-Top is just content just keeping Mirko at arm's reach now. Just kind of keeping that life lead, making sure he can't get in. When he is in, try and keep him kind of out range of those effective, uh, effective footsie range. I mean, if Harley's going to have those gunshots, she's only going to win those trades if she has health to take those trades, but there's a punish. Yep, there's one of those confirms. It's going to do enough. But like I was saying, uh, going in for those gunshot trades, it will favor us. Uh, ooh. Which, Wh which one goes first? Cement or glass? Cement. Oh, oh cement. no! Tried. <laughs> we all made the read. I feel like he punished that jump three on landing too because he did it so early. Instant jump three again. Uh oh, not again. Oh, Mirko got the block this time. And he's challenging it though. But oh no, court pressing buttons and there we go. That clash was so important because the block damage of sparks that was going to come after that would have put Mirko in a terrible situation. But um, anyway, to sort of finish my point, gunshot trades will only be good if Mirko has the life lead, and he very consistently is the one that's behind. So he can't take those trades. He can't use gunshots to get in, because if he trades, he takes massive damage, and if he's down on life, he's dead. Why do you not yield? It looks like the ranges that Mirko has to uh, opt to go for those mid rolls, because he's been committed to them the whole the whole set. He's getting a lot of mileage out of them, but when he's trying to roll through the, the beam, I think... If he's stopping the roll in front, the beam is just hitting him as he comes out of the roll. But if he can go actually past K-Top, if he can literally oh, pass through days. Starfire, she's not going to turn Ooh. around. Ooh. I mean, this is... Uh, oh, no way. Nah. Ah, no reason K-Top had to not go for that there. That was that magic pixel. Well, like I was saying, I think when Moko's going for these meter run rolls, it looks like he, will, he just won't have the same success unless he actually rolls through her. Because if he doesn't and he just stops the roll right in front of her, he's just standing up into a beam and being knocked back to full screen again. He needs to make sure he passes through, otherwise it's just not going to work out. Now, yeah, there's the character change. I was saying, it looked like Mirko's Harley was having quite a hard time in this matchup. Um, and I think the change to Black Adam does actually make sense. Uh, Mirko is less likely to change characters than K-Top, because K-Top has been known to play so many characters in NRS games. But in this situation, I get it, right? You know, one, I mean, one meter burn dive kick is all you need to get in on zoning. And against Starfire, it might somewhat, that threat of the airborne dive kick might somewhat affect K-Top's ability to do that grounded zoning game. You might have to think a little bit more. But even then, Black Adam, super different character oh. to Harley. Like, I'm, I'm not quite sure if Black Adam kind of fits that uh, that archetype, you know, of, of a Mirko character the same way Harley does. That being said, you know, Black Adam, he, I, I'm actually sure that he's actually had access to a Black Adam for a while. I'm still like, getting hit by that low, is Mirko. I honestly feel like Mirko is consistently... He's trying to challenge, because it's either 2-1 or it's 2-3-2. Two, 2-3-2 two. Two, three, two, two, three, two. not blocking. It looks like he's pressing the button. Oh, 2-3-2 oh, oh. two, two is barely minus on block, man. Those down ones checking it into the, the hair, which is safe when you meet your burner, and you've got trade. K-Dop looking next level comfortable at the moment. Oh, the wow, he spent a bar on that too. And of course, oh, only being minus two, he's going to down one for days. He's going to get a full confirm. Standing three and just going, dedicating into the down back three for another time. Tries to confirm by this health. It doesn't even matter if he drops anything. Look at the chip. He's building meter all day. Mirko just can't get out. And there we go. It's the lightning hands. Oh. oh, immediate wake. Not even a wake up attack from K-Top. K-Top, oh my lord. And Mirko oh. doesn't even bother going for the clash. I think he knows there's blue point. Uh, right. I mean, contender for fastest match we've ever had on this show. That's like, I mean that single one, perhaps. Yeah. It definitely, Mirko definitely wasn't adjusted to Black Adam there. I mean, we've, we've clearly seen that. It can sometimes take players longer than others to, to, to get used to it, but Harley Mirko just did the same. Yeah, goes straight back to Harley. Oh, I, I don't no. think he's really feeling Black Adam at all. But unfortunately for Mirko, God, we're both a bit sniffly. I feel like it's... it's I weird. probably sound horrific, and for that I apologise. Sorry, there's guys. There's nothing I can do about it. But I'm full of cold. I'm constantly fighting back coughing, and I'm bunged up to hell. As bad as much as I can offer. Hope you guys are having a nice winter. We certainly are. But, uh, like I was about to say, Mirko giving up that one game. I think when you've got two games left and you give up one of them to a bad character change. 
Also, though, um, ah, K-Top. K-Top starting with the uh, that advancing. Is it, is it 4 2 with Starfire? 4 2, yeah. Yeah, starting with Starfire is 4 2 every time, and Mirko has actually yet to uh, just crouch it. Uh, it's high, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a mid. Uh, we did see Jackal versus Jupiter, of course, and one thing Jupiter was having a hard time with when he was trying to challenge with standing 1 or forward 2 uh, was the Black Matter down 1. It was the Black Matter down 2. Those guys were getting hit for going for the highs. Yeah, like, exactly. It isn't punishing K-Top the same way we saw Jupiter suffer to it last week. And again, goes to the meter burn roll, but just ends right in her face. Like, he needs to go through. Oh, Mirko was so much work to do, man. Five games to claw this one oh, back. Again, getting opened up by the line. Mirko just isn't blocking the string. Has got elements of a lifeline, though, with K-Top. And oh, there you go, Mirko. Ouch. He expects the meter burn on the hair. We're just going to see a trait charged into meter burn. He's going to take chip and die. This is match point for K-Top. Oh, big hit. Nice read. There's the restand. Yeah. Oh, immediate jump too. Mirko just cannot keep a lid on K-Top. From that distance, I think there, there was no way K-Top was not going to challenge that. But here comes more of the chip and he sits there to expect it. Maybe try to down two expecting a jump out. But to be honest, from that, in that situation, I would like to have seen K-Top dedicate into his trait after those Stardusts. There's the safety. Oh, big jump three again. I think K-Top going for those double down ones on hit, just trying to confirm off it, but not quite in range. Has one bar to work with here. Another meter burn roll doesn't connect. But that's what Mirko needs, but immediately clash. Yeah, he tried to hand the air with the down back three, but he kind of just got kicked right in the face for his troubles right there. Oh, Mirko. He's going to do a little bit more damage. K-Top without the uh, clash, but I don't know. I think with his meter and the damage that he has left to do, the saving grace is that I mean, he's K-Top's running out of trait. And I mean, yeah. that really is the biggest thing here. Do you mean, uh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. There's one more. He's going to get probably one more use of it before the end of this no, round. Always if he uses it now, if he uses it now, he'll have it. He's got two currently, but will he get the chance to? Oh no, might have expected the trait <gasps> right there. Whoa, oh, no, jump him in it. Uh oh, yeah. yeah. As soon as he connected there, that was guaranteed chip. I don't think Mirko could have done anything about that. And that is going to be 10-5 to finish off K-Top. It's going to be taking the win with a, a surprise pick, but absolutely worked out. Starfire was definitely a surprise pick. And it's not because, um, you know, we thought he would be potentially bad with Starfire. It's that... We haven't seen K-Top or Mirko, for that matter, play in a long time. And Starfire was the last character I expected to see. But I'm glad we saw it, actually. Uh, to be honest with you, after seeing Jupiter play last week, and now we've seen K-Top play this week, I wasn't expecting to see Starfire again so soon. But I'm happy that we did. No, absolutely. I think she's definitely a, a character that we, unfortunately, don't really get to see as much of as I think we would like in the community. She isn't super popular, not, not too many people playing her competitively or at a high level. Um, not to be said that no one is. I know there obviously are some players dotted around on various systems that are doing it, but we don't really get to see it offered enough. And uh, super happy that K-Top was able to bring that out today. Thanks very much, guys, for playing. Mirko, commiserations, 10-5. You looked really good early on, but to be honest, looked really lost in the matchup. You know, just, just getting hit by the same strings over and over again when, there, when there's no mix-up there, and you know there's no mix-up there, could only ever mean he just doesn't know the string hits there. Or maybe he is just trying to poke. He's just doing something yeah, other it's, than it's what It's also one of those situations where it's more likely that he wasn't blocking. It's, it's not as likely he was just getting hit by the low every time as much as he was probably trying to challenge. Because you can't forget, um, it's... 2-1, which is the drill string, which he ate all the time, or 2-3, which is 2-3-2, or 2-3 Stardust. So she has these really weird kind of staggers and these weird pressure strings that go into ridiculous chip. If you try and challenge those because you expect a Stardust or something like that, then of course you might eat three into something else, or you'll eat the one into you know, the four <coughs> threes or the back threes like we were seeing him cancel. So basically, I think that was just uh, K-Top. A combination of Mirko freezing up massively, and the one time he would fight back, he would eat the string, and K-Top had already confirmed into the launch, or he is just so overwhelmed by the amount of variety in what K-Top was doing pressure-wise that he just sat there and ate chip all day, which is Starfire's strength. All right, well, that does mean we have our, our first set is, is done and dusted. K-Top winning 10-5 over Mirko. Right, you have to, have... you're going to have to add the 